So for today's video, we're going to be talking about what is heat. And we have a very specific physics definition for heat. So we got to use the word correctly because in common everyday language, heat is used in very different, uh, for different situations. But for physics, we have to be very careful how we use it. And of course, we're going to talk about energy, specific heat, and temperature. Before we get started, please don't forget, please subscribe to my channel, support my channel, Step by Step Science. You can get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You can give me a comment on this video. You can give me a thumbs up. You can subscribe and you can share. Thank you very much. What is heat? Heat is the flow of energy. Or we like to say heat is energy in transit. And of course, if it's flowing, it's got to be flowing somewhere. And if it's in transit, it's got to be in transit from one place to another, and where is all that heat going? Well, that heat goes from areas of high temperature to areas of low temperature, or objects with a higher temperature to objects of a lower temperature. Okay, so that is the direction that heat is going. So we have a nice little definition we can use for heat. Heat is the energy transferred between objects due to differences in temperature. Okay, so heat will only flow between two objects if they have a different Temperature. Now, there's some things we have to be careful of how we use heat or use the term heat. We don't like to say that objects possess heat. We don't like add up and say oh, this object has so much heat. We don't say that because objects don't really have heat. Heat is a transfer of energy. So therefore, objects possess or objects have energy, internal energy, but not heat. A lot of times I ask my students, well, how do we raise the temperature or how do we lower the temperature? How do we freeze something or condense a, a gas into a liquid? And they'll say things like heat it up, cool it down, put it on the stove, put it in the refrigerator, freeze it like that. But that's not how we do it. If we want to heat something up, we add heat. If we want to cool something down, lower the temperature, then we want to remove heat from that object. Okay, so that's how we like to talk about heat. Heat is uh, the flow of energy from high to low temperature. Okay, now, we did say that in order for heat to be transferred from one object to another, it has to be a difference in temperature. So here we have two objects. One is a larger object, and one is a smaller object. Now, you might think the energy might flow or something because this one is much bigger, but they're at a higher temperature, and heat will only flow when there's a difference in temperature. So we have a system with two different objects, or we have a system with two objects, if they're at the same temperature, then no heat will flow between those two objects. The bigger object might have more energy, might have more total energy, but no heat will flow between those two objects. So in order to get heat to flow, we have to have objects at different temperatures. So here we have a big object at 20 degrees Celsius. We have a smaller object at 50 degrees Celsius. And heat is always going to go from areas of high temperature to low temperature. Once again, sometimes people say, oh, this is bigger we well, yeah, may have more internal energy, but the heat is going to flow from high to low temperature. So it's going to flow across from the 50 until the 20 until they reach the same temperature. All right. So we like to say that the transfer of energy from areas of high temperature to areas of low temperature, that is heat. Okay, maybe a couple of little specific things about heat. When we do some calculations and talk about heat and write some stuff down, we have to remember that the equation symbol for heat is delta Q. Really, it's just the Q, but since heat is always being transferred from one place to another, we're usually talking about the changes in heat or the changes in energy due to the flow of heat or the change in heat due to the flow of energy from one place to another. So we use the symbol Q, and delta means the change in, so that's the change in heat. The unit, the SI, the metric unit, is the joule. Okay, that's the international symbol for the unit for, that is the unit for heat is the joule and it has the abbreviation J. It's the same energy, same, same unit we use for heat and energy and also for work. Okay, and so for example, we could write it down like this, delta Q is equal to 1500 joules or the change in heat is equal to 1500 joules, something gained 1500 joules of energy. All right. So that's that. And now we have another unit we commonly use. Now we did say that system international, the international system is the joule, is the unit for heat. But if you eat a lot of food, which some people eat a lot of food and some people, most people eat some food, then you'll be, sometimes you'll be looking at the calories, the number of calories that are in the food. So we have calorie as a unit that is commonly used, even in science. 
and you will see that the calorie is the amount of heat, or one calorie is the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. Now you'll notice this is a small C, though this is the small C calorie, because of course there's also the big, not of course necessarily, but there's the big C calorie, it can be a little confusing. The big C calorie is a thousand times more than the small C calorie, so that is defined as the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius. So this one, the small C, is heat for one gram to one degree Celsius, and this is the heat, the large C is a heat for one kilogram by one degree Celsius. So the change in temperature is the same, it's just that you have a thousand times as much water in this case. That means that one large C calorie is equal to a thousand small C calories, and that one calorie is equal to one kilocalorie or one thousand calories. Okay, so it's just a thousand times bigger, but you got to be careful whether you're talking about the big C or the small C uh, calorie. Now, another important thing for heat is joule. The unit is the joule. I just want to go over that. Uh, James Prescott Joule, that's James Prescott Joule. He had this device in the mid 1800s when he was doing a lot of work with heat and energy. And he came up with this idea of the mechanical equivalent of heat. All right, now here we have a mechanical system and we're gonna change the temperature of the water that is in this container right here. And this mass is gonna fall and work is gonna be done on it, which we would measure the work done on that object in joules. And as it falls, it pulls this string, and as it comes over the pulley, it pulls this string, and then it pulls this uh, wooden rod here, and that's attached to this paddle, which is inside this container that has water in it, it's measuring the temperature with the thermometer, and as that thing falls, it's losing energy. Well, where is that energy going? It's losing, it's me mechanical work is being done on that. It's losing energy, it's falling down. Okay, and where is that work going to? Well, that work is going into heating up that water like that. Those paddles will turn around, the water will change temperature, the thermometer will, will register a change in temperature. You gotta measure that very carefully because it's a very small change in temperature. And he determined that that was the mechanical equivalent of heat, was to heat up that water. And he determined that when you have one calorie change, Okay, that is equal to 4.186 joules of work. All right, and you can also say that that would be 4,186 joules is one kilocalorie or 1,000 calories. So as that falls and loses energy, then that energy, some of that energy is converted into heat inside that container there. And we use this term because this is for water, of course, when we talk about specific heat, and this has to do with the heat the specific heat of water, which we're gonna talk about on the next slide. So these values here are only good for water. Every value will have a different uh, specific heat. So now, what is specific heat? Well, specific heat is the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of one gram of the substance by one degree Celsius. And we use this term, specific heat, when we wanna calculate the total heat or the total energy gained by an object when we change its temperature. So here we have the total heat is delta Q, the change in the heat. M is for the mass of the object, C is for the specific heat, and delta T is for the change in temperature. So we can calculate the change in heat if we know the mass of the object, we know by how much the temperature has changed, and we know how much energy it takes to change one gram of that substance by one degree Celsius. And every material, it's kind of like density, it's a physical property, every material has a different specific heat. The specific heat of water happens to be relatively high, 4.186 joules, okay? It's the amount of heat needed to raise one gram, one degree Celsius. So we would say the specific heat of water is 4.186 joules per gram degree Celsius. It takes 4.186 joules of energy, of heat, to change one gram, the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. Now, I made another video where I talked about 
specific heat in more detail, you can link to that video right now in the upper right hand corner of this video up there. Okay, now we're going to do a quick calculation here to end this video. We're going to calculate how much heat is needed to raise um, 150 grams of water from 20 to 35 degrees Celsius. So we're going to raise the temperature of 150 grams of water from 20 to 35 degrees Celsius. We're going to get out our calculator and our equation, delta Q equals MC delta T. We can simply plug the values in. It's 150 grams. We know the specific heat is 4.186. Takes that many joules to change each gram by one degree Celsius, but well, we have 150 grams and we have a 15 degree change. We just multiply those together and we get that that would require a change in heat of that water of 9,419 joules, which we could also write as 4.9 times 10 to the third joules. Okay, so there you go. That is a quick rundown of what heat is. Remember, heat is when energy flows. Okay, it's the flow of energy from areas of high temperature to areas of low temperature. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following things. Subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment. Let me know what you thought of the video. And don't forget, sharing is caring. You can share this video with all of your friends and show them just how much you care. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.